everybody. I left my Dutch oven inside of my shed and I let it rust over. You can see some of the, the brownish spots. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna re-season it and it's gonna take a while. And yeah, I think you guys might be interested. I, I'm having a snow day, that's why I'm all bundled up. It's because it looks like this outside. It's like the most snow I've ever seen inside this state. I just tried starting a fire uh, in my fire pit outside and it wasn't very successful and it was pretty cold uh, so but now I'm deciding to do some more man craftiness like things and I'm gonna take care of reseasoning my Dutch oven you can see right there I got bacon and my cast iron skillet and yeah so I might step away for a second to fix that but there's my Dutch oven and I'll try to narrate what I'm doing as soon as I get the thing to stop spinning. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I just gotta move the potato in the right direction. <laughs> How do I get to stop spinning? weird so you can see <laughs> I'm hanging it from a potato basket <laughs> or from a fruit basket and uh, yeah so if it sways and it makes you sick I'm sorry it's almost stable okay so what I got going on here is bacon is fine <laughs> what I've got a Dutch oven that's rusted. I've got sandpaper, I've got steel wool, and I also have a wire brush attachment that's supposed to go to the front of uh, front of my grill. There you go. You can you can see you see the brown spots? Yes. Not good. Not good rust. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the rest off as much as I can. Actually, I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna get all of it off. Because what I'm gonna do in this whole process is I've got to A, get the rest off. B, I've got to prime it. I think that's what it's called. Um, bone dry it. I've got to bone dry it inside the oven. So I've heated up the oven as high as I can, which goes up to about 450 degrees and um, I've got to throw it in there after I get all the rust off of it so I can extract any moisture that's on the inside. There really shouldn't be any moisture, but I'm doing this just in case. And uh, I'm gonna leave it inside the oven at max heat for a few hours, and then after that, I'm going to cover it in oil, uh, just rub it around really good, and then I'm going to uh, do the same process I did when I bone dried it, just throw it in the oven for a couple of hours. And uh, it should come out, see that, this part right here, how it's really shiny? Should come out basically non-stick style, so that I don't ever really need to do this process again. I don't know why it rusted, I'll be honest. I mean, I know we're in Washington, that's probably enough of a reason, but it shouldn't have, it shouldn't have rusted if my technique was good enough before. I guess it, my uh, my seasoning, covering it in oil and throwing it inside the oven for a few hours, I guess it wasn't that successful, so. Last time I did this, I didn't have the steel brush. I just did it with the sandpaper, and that's for Ever because of these little spikes. So you can see the cross hatching that's going on and how it's kind of hard to maneuver around the spikes, but I still have to get this stuff off because this is really the, the most tenacious of it. Hang on, I gotta start making. I got my 
my stuff everywhere. I did clean the house this weekend, but I cleaned other parts of the house besides the kitchen. <laughs> wife would probably, she probably is going to freak out, not will freak out, when she sees that I put this live in our house, looks gnarly. <laughs> Stop swaying. Potato basket. Gotta get hot. <sighs> Probably take off the sweater in a second. I really like this sweater. I got it from Eddie Bauer for like 50 bucks when it was usually like 200 or something like that. I get made fun of for wearing it because people are like, oh, it was really nice of your wife to let you borrow that sweater. Whatever, screw you. Him and me wear more sweaters like this, and I feel like I'm wearing it way when I wear it. So, screw up! Get my bacon. It's almost done. Show you my bacon. Because it's delicious. The whole point of a cast iron anything is to be A, non-stick, and be extremely durable. Like, you're really not gonna ruin a cast iron skillet or, you know, cookware of any sort because it's from cast iron. It's like, I don't know, it feels like you could launch a cannonball with the same material, which is probably honestly what people did back in the day. Got to take this off, or else I'm gonna burn it. Wait one second. Yeah, the only real thing you can do to ruin a cast iron skillet is let it rust over. And I'm not going to let mine get that far. Like, there's really not that much rust on it. And I don't know what happens to the human body when it consumes food particles or food with rust particles in it. So I'm just not going to mess with it. Pretty warm view right now, so I'll take that off again. But yeah, you can see. Every time you cook in a cast iron, it honestly adds a little bit of flavor to it. Like, which sounds kind of gross, but really what you're doing is you're putting the flavors of whatever you're cooking, whether it be garlic or whether it be bacon or like moose meat or something like that. Onions. A lot of people say that they really actually like the unique flavors that come from cooking in cast iron because it holds all this stuff in. And you should never wash cast iron with oil because that just removes the seasoning, the, the uh, oil that's baked into the pores. Ow, damn, that's really hot. So really all you should do is scrape it like I am. Like, yeah, this is a lot of oil. I'm, I might not throw away. <laughs> I might just cook my eggs in it because that's awesome and delicious. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. If I can get this open, and I'll be able to have some eggs. This is really going to pop. I should definitely turn that down. If I start a fire, you guys are going to be here to witness it. <laughs> Gosh dang it.
reason why well, my hands are so nasty is because I did try to start that fire. I wasn't successful at it. Every time I started a fire, I learned something new. Including when I failed to be able to start a fire. Because, I don't know, it's, it's kind of... Okay, I'm going to wash my hands real quick. It's almost like uh, learning a life principle in that it takes maintenance and work and diligence. Like you really can't just leave a fire and let it go. Like you have to manage it. You have to watch it. You have to add kindling to it incrementally. As I say, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And the older I get, the more I believe that that is not just an extremely true principle, but a universal truth that would avoid much hardship. Everyone practice it. If I practice it, I'll tell you what. Because if that were the case, I would not be seasoning, re-seasoning, my Dutch oven. That is almost done. Now, unlike a normal pan, you can't just grab it by the thing, the handle, because the whole thing heats up. They take a long time to heat up, but they stay hot for a while. swinging basket of nausea again. Nausea basket. So I was actually using this to cook earlier. It's kind of cool. So Lodge makes their stuff like interchangeable. So like it fits on their Dutch oven, but it, it also fits on, so it also fits in the pot perfectly well, or the skillet perfectly. So that's cool. And they they really don't make too much. Like it's all just a couple of products that they have, but they work well together. Can you see the, uh, no, you can't because nausea basket spun. Can you see the, uh, the like silver kind of coming out? That's the actual color of the iron. And that's what we want to get down to. I, I'm not entirely positive. I might be able to just leave. This is annoying. Might be able to just leave the um, seizing that I have on it already and like add some more but uh, I'm not entirely positive and I'm not completely decided yet so I might good golly I might take it all off I don't know it's taking kind of a long time and it's gonna take hours so I don't think I'm gonna keep you here the whole time. <laughs> Probably quit and then upload pictures or something like that. That is the sound of my oven telling me that it's ready to bone dry. I'm not ready for it, but I turned it on about 15 minutes ago. So, and it's just now. Just now ready, so. I'm gonna let it keep going. Yeah, I might take off my Hemingway sweater. Steinbeck. Steinbeck is what it meant, not Hemingway. <laughs> Yeah, I'm 
taking this off. I think I have most of it off. I'm just gonna check my work. It's really the lid that's the worst part. Honestly, if I thought it was safe to eat rust, then I just wouldn't care. I'm sure a lot of people let their Dutch ovens get rusty and still cook with them. But those people might also be anti-vaxxers, so I don't know if I can really bit of like bronze but it's so little I don't really I'm not really worried about it too bad yeah I think I'm gonna work on the other side now side's not really that bad. It's really just a little bit of spotting. Like that. Holding this with your hand is not comfortable. <laughs> You're probably asking why I'm not using my drill. It's because I'm, I'm doing broad sweeps and I'm not like, I'm not precisely doing it. I'm just kind of scrubbing all over. Honestly, when I use my drill, it just kind of skips. It's kind of hard to, <clears throat> kind of hard to control. Honestly, if I was like really smart, I would just do the whole thing. Ugh. Oh man, I should have started with that. Holy crap! See, that would have been harder to do on that side, so that's why I led with the wire brush. I wish I could leave it like that because that just looks cool. <laughs>
think I may have just put more water on it. Sounds good, but I ain't gonna be able to dry it, so I'm not really that worried. Yeah, you should bone dry at like 550 for two to three hours. To make sure that all the moisture is extracted. And I think if you don't get then the oil that seasons the metal on the outside, just seal it in and then it will create pressure and then possibly crack the iron. Now I'm not a physicist, I'm not even smart, but I think that would happen. <laughs> I wish I was done. I wish like these cool striations meant I was done. It looks neat. Honestly, like it looks kind of, you can see the inside. It looks kind of gross, honestly. It looks like old and dirty, but that is olive oil and the oil from the other foods I cooked it in. And honestly, it's, it's not unhealthy. It's not, it's not gonna kill you. <laughs> it's not even gonna make you sick. And I like cooking this way because I think our ancestors have really cool traditions. And I think that, uh, with pride and dignity and having heirloom equipment, stuff that you can pass your kids. I've heard people doing that. I've heard of people taking or willing their cast iron cookware to their children and their grandchildren and it lasts for generations. Now, I don't know if it's possible, but I've heard of people unearthing cast iron cookware in like a cabin or something like that that's been abandoned and it all covered in rust and then restoring it just like I am right now. But I can't imagine if it's covered in rust how long it would take pain the butt. I really don't want to go all that ham. And you can see like it's grooved, like it's very porous. So there's lots of pox, pox arcs and stuff like that. And to get all of it, that's where that comes in. I probably have to use a different um, grade of brush to get it all off. season him. It's really just the lid I was worried about. I think this is, as gross as it sounds, I think that's just food. Yeah, it's alright. Oh, actually I do. Okay. Start on the bottom, so I need to, I need to be thorough. Forgot that the bottom was rusted. So when you rub the oil on it, you just want thin layer. You don't want it to pool. And when you place it, you can place it upside down like that on the rack. And you're just gonna put it straight on the rack. You can put it on a cookie sheet, but I mean, I don't really, I'm not gonna do that. And 
you don't want it to pool because it'll kind of gel. It'll be weird. So, that nah, is not gonna be very good for the, the cooking process. fingers. No, lately on my weekend, but I haven't been doing a whole lot. I've just been sitting and playing Red Dead Redemption 2. So, this is actually using quite a bit of calories, and I'm glad. <laughs> Plan to go to the gym today. I also planned to do that yesterday. I wasn't very motivated, so I didn't. Just a little bit of rust. angles on the, there's a wire brush. Now that, I'm not worried about that because, eh, that browning on the handle, because it's just the handle, the handle doesn't really get involved in cooking. So, yeah. The food's getting cold, I know it. Maybe not. Maybe it's just Maybelline. I kind of wish I hadn't had to season this puppy. This is, I think this is the third time I've had doing it since I started using it last year. And I'm sad about it because I I want that like that heritage flavor. That's actually picking up quite a bit. Oh, I was making me sad. I was, Deeper than I knew. I want to be easy, is what I want. Yeah, I wish I could just not be season this thing ever.
battery's starting to go out. That's not good. I actually don't think I really need it. It's not that bad. Good thing I'm this far through. <laughs> you got a little bit of a rock burn. I think of it. See all the shavings at the bottom. I don't know. If that's grease. I don't think it's metal filings. hard to get because the drill keeps on spinning out of my hand. When you first buy these, Lodge has um, the enamel on them from the factory. I suppose you could cook with it straight, but I was recommended to not. So when I first pulled mine out of the cardboard, I stripped it, and then I bone dried it. And I oiled it, stuck it in the heat to season. But maybe that's why I'm at where I'm at right now. 
for the Tindley the Factory seasoning on. But I don't think so. Wrong. All right, let's see all those shavings. Okay, so I'm going to wipe it. There's just some parts you're not really going to be able to get because crevices and stuff like that. So I'm going to wipe it with clock. I would honestly just rinse it if I thought, if I didn't need to uh, bone dry it, or if I was confident that all of the water would get out. But you know what? There's no reason to risk it. So I'm not going to do that. So, there you have it. That is uh, step one of, of uh, restoring uh, your cast iron pot, your Dutch oven. And uh, yeah, I'll probably put up some photos or little video clips of uh, what it looks like at the end. Uh, but uh, the next bit's not that interesting because it's going to be inside the oven. <laughs>